Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and I want to take a look at my five favorite things in SketchUp 2024. So right now, as of this recording, it's the beginning of April 2024, and the new version of SketchUp for desktop just dropped. What I want to do real quick is just hop in there and show you guys what are my five favorite things in the new version. Let's take a look. Okay, so first things first, this is this is the good stuff. This is the good looking stuff. Um, we have some new view types, some new styles that include ambient occlusion. And I love, I like the look of ambient occlusion. You know, just the, the gentle shadowing, the way it emphasizes where materials butt up against each other. So this isn't ambient occlusion. This is just a regular old SketchUp uh, view default style. This, it's actually called default style. Um, but I have right here, I do have a scene shared with ambient occlusion. So you can look at that and you can see this. Look, it just, ah, ooh, mm, I love me some ambient occlusion. It just gives me some depth, it gives me some shadow, it gives me some hint of where geometry is. So you can see these shadows that show up, just toggle back and forth, right? If I go back to standard, uh, it's, I mean, this green chair is all green. These, I have a wood material on here and they're just, all wood the same. Whereas if I toggle on the ambient occlusion, you can see you get those shadows, you get that depth, you get that that look of overlapping materials. So cool. There's a bunch of these uh, ambient occlusion uh, types. In a, I have a group here in the in 2024 ambient occlusion style types, and I have a bunch in here, and they just I just have the ability to come in and change the ambient occlusion values. Just I mean. There it is. It's one of those things where, you know, the image speaks for itself. You get to see it. It's awesome. It's in here. It's part 2024. Better looking models by far. Uh, it does get away from, you know, that classic SketchUp look where it just had these kind of flat materials and lines, which is still available. I could still look at, make files that look this way all the time. But if I want to, I can add that depth, add those shadows, go a little bit deeper. And again, this isn't, this isn't like a rendering or anything. This is actually my SketchUp model. So I can move around in it. Those, those shadows, those ambient occlusion uh, shadows and tones stay in the model as I move in 3D space. All right, second thing I want to point out is the integration with Trimble Connect. So Trimble Connect has been part of SketchUp for a while, but uh, the, the level of integration with this is the newest version of SketchUp for desktop uh, goes beyond where it was before. So a couple things up in the upper right corner, I have my, my I'm logged in icon, but also this little, this little page right here. This tells me since I see a page that this has been saved locally, I know it's been saved because there's a page here. If I hover over, it'll even tell me when it was saved. If I come up to file and I go to Trimble Connect, and I'm just gonna to save to Trimble Connect real quick. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna put this into my, uh, let's see, where is it? I have just a, my SketchUp models, there we go. We'll just go into my SketchUp models and I will just save it. Once I've done that, watch what happens up here. I get this little cloud icon. That cloud indicates that, well, right now the little blue thing indicates it is currently saving. <laughs> Once it's just a cloud up there, that tells me that it's been saved up to Trimble Connect. It even tells me what version, how often have I saved it. At this point, I've just saved it once, so it's on version one. Once this is saved up to the cloud, I can click on the second icon. And the second icon is share link right here. So with this, I can see it say, create a shareable link. And what this will do is it'll generate a link. And if I can take this link now and I can pass this to somebody else, they can click on that link. And this model that I'm looking at right here will open up in SketchUp for web. So they'll actually have a viewable, not it's not editable, it's just a viewable version of this entire model showing up right in SketchUp for web. And all I gotta do is hit copy and then paste it in a text email, write it down on post it. That would be painful, but you could do it. I mean, it, it can happen. Uh, but this link will take them to that viewable version of this exact model that is shared on Trimble Connect. All right, let's keep moving. Those are two of my favorite things. Let's look at another one. I'm gonna hop over here to just an empty, empty screen. Uh, this, by the way, is Teddy, the scale figure for 2024. Everybody say hi, Teddy. And then as we do, bye, Teddy. I'm gonna get rid of Teddy. 
All right, so I'm gonna just create a big uh, building real quick. We're gonna look at some stuff with add location. So I'm just gonna draw a couple rectangles like this, pull them up. I probably should have kept Teddy so I know what scales are, but it's an outline of a building. Now I'm gonna come up here, hit add location. And in add location, uh, first off, you'll see if, if you are familiar, if you've used Add Locational, you'll know this is a, a very different look than I saw, than I've seen before. Um, a couple things. Uh, right here in the screen, I got some stuff. I got North showing up. Uh, I have the option of showing my building on here. I can actually turn this on and off. I can see where's my model as it exists fit on the screen. Um, and then I can, I can actually take this and move it around. So let's see, oh, we'll put this up here. Yeah, well, I like this open, open space. We'll drag it right about here. Uh, and I can put that on there. I can see where it's gonna be. When I hit continue, I can choose, like, like, like I did before, I can choose how much I wanna import with this. Do I wanna, let's get a little bit of this road over here. Okay, so I can choose how much I want. I can tell, do I wanna import a 2D plane, which just be a flat image, or do I wanna bring in a 3D mesh, which is actually going to include how much uh, you know, undulation of the earth is gonna be included. I can choose imagery or street map. I can choose the density of the mesh, how many squares are gonna to use to make up that that, that rolling uh, geometry. Uh, and I can also choose the resolution of the image, high or low, and the provider, Bing or Digital Globe. Depending where you are in the world, you might get better solutions, better results from one versus another. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna hit import. We're not going too deep into this. I just wanted to give you guys an idea how this works and show you one of my favorite parts of this. So this, this works very similar to the way it did before. When this comes in now, there's my model sitting on the, the land as you would expect. But here's the part, here's what make it, makes it my favorite part. Watch this. I come back in to add location. I wanna add another tile. Look what it does. It remembers what I imported last time and it'll let me grab another piece. And watch this, this is this is it, this is the cool part, ready? Snap. So it's gonna snap right up against that other piece and if I say import, it imports that right next to that, look at that. That's so cool. Um, and I have control over those as separate pieces. If I come over here to tags, I have geolocation content, 3D terrain, and I have both of the imports separate, so I can actually toggle them one at a time. This is what makes it one of my favorite, favorite things uh, in this new version, is that ability to import additional context and have control over it separately. All right, we gotta keep moving. Um, I'm gonna bring up and show you something real quick in layout. Oh, here we go. All right, so in layout, I, got, I just got a quick model right here. Uh, this is from the previous model I was looking at. I took a viewport, I snapped it in half, half vector, half raster. That's not new, that's all existing stuff. What is new is over here in preferences, under performance, I have this thing called draft mode. So I'm gonna turn on draft mode. Uh, and what draft mode will do, so here, let's actually turn draft mode off. And I'm just gonna pan. I'm just gonna hold down the middle button and move it around. See what happens? Nothing. That's right, unexciting. The, the before is always the dull one, right? It just moves, uh, as I zoom in here, uh, you can see it's a little jumpy as I'm zooming, um, but it's it's trying to move everything around. So this is a simpler model. As you get more and more complex models with more and more lines, I can definitely see some stutter with things like zooming or panning. But if I enable draft mode, so right now we're just gonna turn on pan and zoom only as opposed to always on, we'll see why in a second. Um, and just I'm just turning it on, I'm not turning any of the options on below, but watch what happens when I zoom. Whoa, do you see that? Look at, my, look at my vector side. Just zooming in and out drops everything down to the basic line width, right? I don't get any of that depth. I don't get any multiple uh, line widths that I have set up, uh, which just saves some of the demand as it redraws the screen each time. So every time, if you're not aware of this, every time I move something on the screen, layout has to go and redraw it. And that's what causes layout to slow down is there's too much redrawing and it takes a while. So it'll, it'll get hung up. So by doing this this way, by dropping it down, it has to redraw less, but it doesn't have to figure out how thick each line is. That's without the options on. The other option I have here is disable raster rendered objects. So this means as I pan and zoom, raster stuff disappears. It just goes away. So I see my viewport, see that, that rectangle right there, 
but what's in it goes away because again, it doesn't have to draw to the screen. It's going to be more performant and go faster. I have another option here to disable viewport drawing altogether. So whether it's vector or raster, they just go away as I, as I zoom in and out. So this is extreme, but if you have a really, really big model, if you're into it and you have a lot going on and you're seeing it's hard to move through the model, you can try to flipping this on and turning these on and off. You don't even have to have this on. You can turn draft mode off all, all you want. And then this is just going to stay, right? So as I come in here, uh, select a viewport, move it around, like it's going to stay the way it was. But if you are experiencing those problems, this is just definitely speeds it up. The other thing that's in here too is the graphics engine. Uh, I do have an experimental graphics engine I can toggle on, which is just gonna better use of how stuff is drawn to the screen. It's not fine tuned, it's not the best yet, but it is uh, an improvement over the old one. So I, I recommend trying this. It's experimental, you know, so that's what's in the name. You're the test pilot, but give it a try. See what you think. Uh, it's, it's got some pretty cool advantages depending on the model you're looking at. Uh, speaking of performance, layout got some performance increase with the, with the draft mode and the experimental engine, but we got some performance increase in SketchUp as well. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to SketchUp and we're going to take a look at this model right here. And this model is, as you can see, a very big model. And you can see it is not, SketchUp's not having any problem moving this big model around. If I did this in 23, uh, it would be chunky, slow, each constantly ga -dunk, ga -dunk, ga -dunk, showing my screen. And a lot of these buildings that are in here would get reduced to you know, those, those dotted outlines because there's too much information for it to draw. This model, just to give you an idea, this model is, so 6 million edges, just shy of 3 million faces. This is a big model. There's no components. So I don't have any of those, you know, load saving techniques that, I, that we always recommend. Use components that repeat. Instead, everything is just an individual group. So nothing, nothing is being, you know, optimized here and it performs brilliantly. So I would say, check this out uh, with those models that are big. If I get like smooth geometry, any place I have a whole lot of geometry, the new version of SketchUp for Desktop just moves with that stuff so much better. And that's what makes this my fifth favorite item, not fifth favorite, but number five of my favorite items in the new version of SketchUp for Desktop. So this was five things. I wanted to show you get my top five things. Uh, this particular release, 2024, has a number, more than I could show in this whatever, what was it, 13 minutes. Um, it goes a lot deeper. You guys got to check it out. Check out the release notes. Um, we'll link to a blog that actually talks about even more of the updates in the description down below. Um, or if you're viewing this from the blog, hey. Uh, but yeah, check out 2024. It is great. It is, it is just a feature-packed release and uh, some of the best, some of my favorite things that we've put into a SketchUp version. I mean, and I'm a sucker for ambient occlusion, honestly, it's one of my favorite ways to view uh, 3D geometry. So check it out. Uh, let us know what you think of this. Leave a comment down below and uh, we'll see you later. Thank you.